Hey everyone, I'm Marcos and I'm Moxie Boosted, and welcome back to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC 2020 video. Today, I'm really excited to finally, finally be bringing you my Galissapod team analysis. Now, this video got delayed for a couple of reasons. Uh, the first reason it got delayed was because I was bringing it to a tournament over the weekend, so I was like, okay, I don't want people at the tournament to possibly know my team. And then the second reason was, immediately after that tournament, I lost my voice and was unable to record videos. But I feel better, it doesn't hurt as much to speak, and I think my regular voice is pretty much back. So, if you guys are excited about this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more Pokemon content. Let's try to reach, uh, I'd say 200 likes today. I'm finally gonna up it, we're finally gonna go for 200. I know we usually destroy the like goal when it's in the 100s, when it's 150, but I, I never want to get my hopes up. Before we start, be sure to answer my question of the day, and that is, it's kind of twofold. One, I want to know how you guys would run Galispod in this format if you were to build a team around it, and two, I want to know which you prefer. I'm going to be doing this team analysis in a bit more of a casual format, uh, rather than that heavily scripted format for the Sandaconda team video, so let me know which version you prefer. And also, in the description, you'll find a Google Doc with everything I'll be talking about in this format, every detail of the team, including what the EV spreads are, what moves these Pokemon are supposed to live, who they outspeed, and what these Pokemon KO. So yeah, once again, if you enjoy this, be sure to leave a like, subscribe for more Pokemon content. Let's get right into the video. So here's an overview of the team. First up, we have Galissapod. It's holding an expert belt. Its ability is Emergency Exit. Its EVs are 84 in HP, 252 attack, 172 speed. It has an adamant nature, and its moveset is First Impression, Aqua Jet, Sucker Punch, and Liquidation. Next up, we have Dragapult. It's holding a life orb, its ability is clear body, it's EV trained with 252 attack, 4 defense, and 252 speed. It's a jolly nature, and its moveset is protect, dragon claw, phantom force, and dragon dance. Next up we have Excadrill, it's holding a choice scarf, its ability is mold breaker, it's EV trained with 4 HP, 252 attack, 252 speed, has a jolly nature, and its moveset is rock slide, high horsepower, iron head, and earthquake. Then we have a Togekiss, it's holding a Wiki Berry, its ability is Serene Grace, it's EV trained with 44 HP, 148 defense, 76 special attack, 4 special defense, 236 speed, it has a timid nature, it has 0 attack IVs, and its moveset is Air Slash, Protect, Follow Me, and Dazzling Gleam. Next we have an Arcanine, it's holding a Figgy Berry, its ability is Intimidate, and its EV spread is 172 HP, 132 special defense, and 204 speed. It has a Jolly Nature, and its moveset is Protect, Flare Blitz, Will-O-Wisp, and Roar. And finally, we have a Rotom Mo. It's holding a Citrus Berry, its ability is Levitate, it's EV trained with 252 HP, 36 Special Attack, and 220 Speed. It has a Timid Nature, 0 Attack IVs, and its moveset is Thunder Wave, Protect, Leaf Storm, and Thunderbolt. Going back to Galissapod, this thing is very, very interesting. When I was making this team at first, I wanted to find a niche in which Galissapod could function effectively, and as it turns out, that is as a sand counter, funny enough. Despite sand team spamming rock slide, Glissapod's bulk is enough where it can take a rock slide from Excadrill and still not have emergency exit go off. In the Google Doc that I'm linking in the description, you'll see which moves will activate emergency exit and which moves do not activate emergency exit. This thing's able to take max attack Adamant Excadrill's rock slide and not have emergency exit go off. It only takes about 34 to 40 percent from that rock slide. As well, it's able to take max attack Jolly Life Orb rock slide and only take 40 to 48 percent. Once again, not activating emergency exit, allowing it to stay in for the remainder of the turn. However, Jolly Max Attack Tyranitar's Rock Slide only has about a 50% chance to activate emergency exit, which means that if it doesn't activate emergency exit, you can stay in in liquidation. That being said, plus one Max Attack Jolly Rock Slide from Tyranitar will activate emergency exit, however, you are guaranteed to live the hit. You will only take about 68 to 81%. And finally, some more moves that are safe to stay in on. Max Special Attack Timid Whimsicott's Moonblast will only do 30 39 to 47%, and Max Attack Jolly Strong Jaw Draco Vicious Vicious Rend will only do 39 to 46%, even if it goes first. However, with the amount of priority moves we're running on this Pokemon, there's very little reason not to attack a Dracovish first. As for damage calcs this Pokemon's able to do, because we are adamant max attack, our Expert Belt boosted Liquidation will actually guarantee Oko Excadrill, and our Aqua Jet is guaranteed to 2-hit KO it, 
doing about 70% to 84%. So if Excadrill has any pre-existing damage on it, we will be able to pick up that KO very safely. Our first impression coming off of that Expert Belt boost, our Expert Belt boosted first impression is guaranteed to one-shot Fast Tyranitars, and our Liquidation has a very high chance of one-shotting Fast Tyranitars, doing 98.2 to 115%. If the Tyranitar is max HP, first impression has a 31.3% chance to 1 hit KO, and liquidation is a guaranteed 2 hit KO, doing 83.5% to 98.5%. Because we're carrying Sucker Punch, we're actually able to do pretty massive damage to Dragapult after that Expert Belt boost, doing 79.2 to 39.9%, guaranteeing the 2 hit KO. Our Liquidation is able to one-hit KO Rhyperior before it Dynamaxes, doing 114 to 135.6%. Glizpod's Aqua Jet is also a guaranteed two-hit KO versus Rhyperior, meaning that under Trick Room you might be able to sneak one in. It's going to be doing 54 to 65%. First Impression has a 43% chance to Oko Berescuta, doing 90.5% to 107.2%. First Impression is going to be doing some pretty major damage to Dracovish, doing 50% to 59.6%. And Sucker Punch on that Dracovish afterwards will be doing 25 percent to 30.7 percent and finally first impression versus 4 hp ludicolo is a guaranteed one hit ko even if they dynamax you still have a 6.3 percent chance to one shot them as well as for what this pokemon was ev to outspeed it's able to outspeed four speed sylveon and zero speed tyranitar meaning that if you can identify that it's a bulkier tyranitar with no speed investment liquidations are much safer to throw out Next up, we have Dragapult's calculations. Now, I didn't EV this thing to live anything in particular. However, I will be going over things that it can live, particularly when it's Dynamaxed. As for things that it's able to live when it's Dynamaxed, it's going to be taking 65 to 77% from Opposing Life Orb Jolly Dragapult's Dragon Claw, and 72.3% to 86.5% from Choice Specs Modest Dragapult's Shadow Ball. It's guaranteed to live Modest Specs Sylveon's Hyper Voice, only taking 92% maximum, and it even has a chance to live Modest Max Special Attack Sylveon's Max Starfall, with only a 6.3% chance for that move to one hit KO it. This Dragapult's also guaranteed to live a Jolly Max Attack Tyranitar's Crunch if you're Dynamaxed. As for things that this thing can live when not Dynamaxed, it does have a chance to live Jolly, Max Attack, Max Quake from Excadrill, with only a 25% chance for it to one-shot it. And we do actually have a chance to live Timid, Max Special Attack, Whimsicott's Moonblast while not Dynamaxed, with a 37.5% chance for it to actually one-shot us. As for things this Pokemon can one-shot, it's actually kind of a long list, especially when you're Dynamaxed, which about 6 times out of 10 you're probably going to want to Dynamax the Dragapult anyways. Our Dragon Claw onto Opposing Dragapult is a guaranteed one-shot, plus one Life Orb Phantom Force is a guaranteed one-shot versus 4 HP Excadrill, Life Orb Max Phantasm versus Excadrill is also a guaranteed one-hit KO, plus one Life Orb Max Wormwind is a guaranteed one-shot versus 4 HP Tyranitar, plus one Life Orb Phantom Force is a guaranteed guaranteed one-shot versus max HP 4 defense Whimsicott. Max Phantasm also has a chance to KO that same Whimsicott, doing 91 to 109.5%, meaning it has a 56.3% chance to one-shot it. However, our Life Orb Max Phantasm is a guaranteed one-shot versus 4 HP Whimsicott, and our plus one Life Orb Max Phantasm is a guaranteed one-shot versus max HP Togekiss. Finally, plus one Life Orb Max Phantasm is a guaranteed one-shot versus max HP Duraludon. Things that you need to keep in mind when it comes to outspeeding, this Pokemon is guaranteed to outspeed max speed jolly choice scarf dracovish and speed ties with opposing max speed jolly dragapult of course next up we have excadrill it isn't really ev to live anything in particular so i didn't bother including any of those so we'll just move on to things that it ko's our high horsepower is going to be a one shot versus fast variants of rotom wash our earthquake actually has a 93.8 percent chance to one shot rotom wash if there's another pokemon on the field our high horsepower is a guaranteed one-shot versus opposing fast Excadrill. Excadrill's Iron Head has a 53.6% chance to one-hit KO 4 HP Togekiss. Max Steel Spike coming out from the Excadrill is a guaranteed one-shot versus 4 HP Togekiss. Max Steel Spike is also a guaranteed one-shot versus fast variants of Tyranitar. Max Rockfall will always one-shot fast variants of Gyarados. And Max Quake, even after an Intimidate, is guaranteed to one-shot fast variants of Arcanine. Things that this Pokemon is guaranteed to outspeed include Max Speed Jolly Choice Scarf Dracovish, Max Speed Jolly Dragapult, and Max Speed Adamant Choice Scarf Darvanitan. Next up we have Togekiss. It's guaranteed to live Max Attack Adamant Iron Head from Opposing Excadrill. 
doing only 83 to 98.7% activating our wiki berry, it's guaranteed to live plus one life orb max phantasm from opposing dragapult, once again activating our wiki berry doing 77 to 91.5%, and it's guaranteed to live minus one jolly max attack tyranitar's max rock fall, doing only 80.7 to 97.5, once again activating our wiki berry. It functions more as a support Pokemon on this team, however, it does actually pick up some pretty important KOs. 76 special attack on our Togekiss means that Max Starfall is going to be able to one-shot opposing Dragapult. Our Max Starfall is also guaranteed to two-shot Max HP Tyranitar while it's in the sand. Dazzling Gleam is actually going to be a guaranteed two-hit KO versus Max HP Grimmsnarl. And Dazzling Gleam is a guaranteed two-hit KO versus opposing Dracovish. This Pokemon is able to outspeed non-choice scarf variants of Dracovish with Jolly Max Speed. It's able to outspeed Max Speed Adamant Excadrill and it outspeeds max speed adamant Lucario. Next up, our Arcanine is actually able to take minus one high horsepower from opposing Excadrill, and opposing max special attack Rotom Wash's Hydro Pumps only have a 31% chance to one-shot us. As for things this Pokemon KOs, Flare Blitz is able to one-shot opposing Excadrill, opposing Ferrothorn, and opposing Lucario, while that isn't a very long list of things that this Pokemon is able to one-shot, it functions more as a support Pokemon, being able to spread status with Will-O-Wisp. This Pokemon is guaranteed to outspeed Max Speed Jolly Excadrill. Finally, we have our Rotom Cut. It's able to take a minus one Adamant Max Attack Flare Blitz from opposing Arcanine, doing only 81.5 to 96.8% to us. It's guaranteed to live Max Attack Tyranitar's Max Rockfall, doing only 68.7 to 80.8% to us. And it's able to take Adamant Max Attack Excadrill's Max Rockfall, taking only 50.3% to 59.8%. Moving on to things that Rotom is able to knock out, 36 special attack investment means that Leaf Storm coming out from our Rotom has a very high chance to 2-hit KO fast Tyranitar in the sand even after the special attack drop. Our Leaf Storm is also a guaranteed one-shot against opposing Gastrodon, and our Thunderbolt has a chance to 2-hit KO max HP, max special defense Corviknight after Figgy Berry recovery. Rotom is able to outspeed max speed Timid Togekiss, max speed Jolly Braviary, and max speed Jolly Gyarados. Moving on to leads you're going to see with this team, if you're facing opposing standard teams that are carrying Togekiss Dragapult, lead with either Togekiss Dragapult for follow me support while Dragapult KOs opposing Togekiss, or lead with Togekiss Excadrill to follow me support while Dynamax Excadrill KOs Togekiss. Alternatively, Dynamax Togekiss can threaten Dragapult with Max Starfall or Speed Boost with Max Airstream while Choice Scarf Excadrill rock slides both of them. Be sure to bring Rotom Moe in the back for speed control, especially if the team is carrying a Gyarados, as it will scare off the Gyarados in most cases by threatening a KO with Thunderbolt. And the final member of the team will be either Dragapult or Excadrill, whichever one of them you didn't lead off with. If you're facing Rain Offense, be sure to lead with Galissapod Excadrill. Galissapod can threaten a KO versus Ludicolo with first impression on the lead, forcing it to switch, die, or fake out the Galissapod. Even if Ludicolo decides to Dynamax, it still has a chance to die to first impression. Excadrill can then Dynamax and click Max Rockfall into Pelipper, removing the rain and KOing it after the sand if it's carrying a Focus Sash. In the back, you should bring Togekiss and Rotom Mo to deal with the rest of the rain offensive Pokemon. However, if you do see a Ferrothorn on the team, drop Togekiss for Arcanine. Versus Trick Room Offense, if their Trick Room setter is Dusclops, lead off with Arcanine and roar out the Dusclops to prevent Trick Room. Next to that Arcanine, you can bring either Excadrill or Togekiss to fish for flinches. If their Trick Room Setter is Hatterene with Ndidi next to it, perform the same lead but always bring Excadrill to attempt to flinch. This is unfortunately the only way for this team to prevent Trick Room on that lead, but luckily Dusclops is becoming much more common than Hatterene and Ndidi. In the back, bring Rotom or Glyspod to check Rhyperior teams. Glyspod can function as a fast Pokemon under Trick Room with many priority moves. Sometimes you will need both, but Togekiss is also very useful for defensive maneuvering and clicking follow me. Finally, versus Sand Offense, always lead off with Galissapod and Dragapult. Galissapod can one-shot fast Tyranitar with first impression, allowing Dragapult to Dynamax and deal with the opposing Excadrill. Galissapod is also guaranteed to live any rock slide it takes from either Pokemon, but be cautious of Max Rockfall. In the back, bring Rotom Cut to switch in on Earthquakes and spread Thunder Wave as speed control. The final member will be any of the remaining three and is very dependent on matchup. Generally speaking though, it's safer to bring Excadrill because it can outspeed just about every Pokemon on Sand Teams and threaten a KO, barring Sand Rush Excadrill, which will outspeed our Excadrill. But yeah, that's all I have to say about the team. If you have any questions, be sure to leave it in the comment section down below. And be sure to check out the Google Doc, which I am linking in the comment section down below for you all to look at. Be sure to answer the comment question of the day as well. It was too full today. Do you like the format that I did for this video? Or would you prefer me to go back to the format that I did with the Sandaconda team video that I posted a few weeks ago? 
and how would you use Galissapod on a team if you were to build around him. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video at any point in time and subscribe for more competitive Pokemon content and consider supporting me on Patreon. By supporting me on Patreon, you're able to see your name at the end of these videos in a thank you card and get access to my exclusive Patreon team building live streams. Check out links to my social media in the description. I have a Twitch channel, which I will definitely be live streaming on as soon as this video goes up. So if you're done watching this video, check me out on Twitch. I also have a Discord linked in the description, which you can join so you can talk to me about Pokemon and team build with the other members of the community. But yeah, with that, thank you for watching everyone. I really appreciate all of you. We're very, very close to 10k subscribers and I'm really excited about all that. You guys are amazing and the support has been through the roof. Love all of you guys. Have a nice night and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.